Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE general test, 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 227, quantitative comparison question number 9, GRE. Dash 10e for the 10th edition of the book. Then the page number dash qc for quantitative comparison number nine. Let's take a look at it. We are told that this quantity n is somewhere between 750 and 1500. That's how one reads it. Read it on an, on an intuitive level. Read, read it on a, in a very simple English language. Don't read it in a, like a knee. Don't read it like a like a like a geek, like a nerd, like a freak. Don't sit there and read 750 is less than n, which is le, which is less than 1500. No, that's not how one reads it. What what does this say? This says that we are dealing with some quantity n, which has to be between 750 and 1500. And what is it that you that you that we are asked to compare? You are asked to compare this quantity, 1500 minus n versus n minus 750. Let's take a look at it. The trick here is to make sure that uh, that you that you that you uh, contemplate all possible scenarios. There are four possible answers. There are four possible answers here. Let's put them here. A, B, C, D. What is it? What is it that one claims when one picks A for the answer in these questions? When you pick A for the answer, when one picks A for the answer in these questions, what one is claiming is that the quantity in column A is always greater. Do you understand? Not sometimes, not in this particular instance, but always greater. That's the claim you're making. And if that claim turns out to be wrong, then of course, then the answer is wrong. What is it that you're claiming when you pick uh, B for the answers? What you're claiming is that the quantity in column B is always greater. And when you pick C for the answer choice in these questions, in the quantity to comparison questions, what you're comparing is that the two quantities are, again, always equal. Always is the operative word. You must never forget that word, always. Even though in the instructions it does not say that. If you read the top of the page there, it does not use the word always. But that's what they mean. I wish they would put always in the instructions where it says A if quantity in column A is and then I wish they would insert the word always in the capital letter. That would make life easier for a lot of the people. But they don't. But that's what they mean. So let's see what we can do here. So what we have to do here is to look at all the extreme scenarios. Let me start out with one extreme scenario which is let's pretend that N is 751. Let's pretend that N is 751. As close to 750 as we can get. If that were the case, if that were the case, one does not know that. It's a hypothetical statement, okay? Hence the use of the word were. If that were the case, this quantity would have been 1500 minus 751. This quantity would be 1500 minus 751. And this quantity would be 751 minus 750, which equals 1. And this equals... 749, as you can see, sev let me put it here, 749, and this equals 1. As you can see, 749 is more than 1. This quantity in column A is bigger. So what does that tell me? The work that I have done so far by plugging in 751 for N, what does it tell me? It does not tell me what the answer is. It only tells me what the answer is not. Since I have found one instance where this quantity is bigger than this quantity, quantity, quantity in column A is bigger than the quantity in column B, it tells me that B cannot be the answer. Because B would have meant that the quantity in column B is always greater. Well, quantity in column B cannot possibly be always greater because I have found one instance when it's not. I also now know at this point that the answer cannot be C. Because C would have meant that the two quantities are always equal. Well, they cannot possibly be always equal to each other because I have found one instance when they are not. Answer has to be either A or a D. 
So now in order to figure out whether it's A or D, I have to look at the other extreme scenario. Let's pretend that N is, let me do it in a red pen so you can see it. Let's pretend that N this time is very close to 1500. 1499, let's make it. If that were the case, again, if that were the case, one does not know if it is or not, hence the hypothetical statement here. If that were the case, then this quantity would have been 1500 minus 1499, which would be 1, and this would be 751, sorry. Fourteen ninety nine minus seven fifty, and of course this quantity is going to be very close to seven. Uh, it's going to be seven forty nine, and now this is the case. Now the quantity in column B is bigger because this equals to, equals to seven forty nine, and seven forty nine of course is more than one. So before this quantity was bigger, column A was bigger. Now the column B is bigger. We're getting conflicting answer. Therefore, the answer is D. That's it. We cannot tell which quantity is bigger. It depends on the value of the N. So how many possible values can N assume? Let me just take a second here. I'm going to go in the back of the camera. I'll be back in five seconds. All right. So we have looked at two possible values of N. We took one extreme case where N was 751 and we took another extreme case of N equal to 749 because N has to be between 750 and 1500. We looked at two possible values of N. I want you to pause this clip right now. I want you to pause this video for, for, for a few seconds, for however long it takes you, to figure out how many different values N can have. How many different values could N assume? I want you to pause this thing. For, for as long as it takes you, once you figure out, once you have the answer as to how many different values n can have, we only looked at two possible values. How many different possible values of n can there be? Once you have the answer to it, come back and resume the clip. I'm going to actually get out of frame for th three seconds, four seconds, so that you have a chance to play with it a little bit, and I'm going to be back in five seconds. So what did you find? How many different values can n have? And if you're sitting there subtracting this from this and well, the difference is 750 and therefore something like that, if you're, if, you're, if you're talking about that, the answer is not, answer is n can have infinite different values. N, n can have infinite different numbers of values. Why? Because there is nowhere in the problem it says that n has to be an integer. There is nowhere in the problem it says that n has to be a whole number. I just took the whole numbers just to make my life easier. N could be, N could be, since it has to be more than 750, N could be 750.00001 and it would still work. And since it has to be less than 1500, that is all I'm told here, that it has to be less than 1500, N could be 1499.9999999999 forever and ever, who knows, and it will still work. There are infinite different values of N, I just took two easy ones. Uh, the whole numbers just to make our life easier. The answer is D. I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to, you have to be, here it did not matter because of the fact that we, if, if you thought that they were integers, uh, it did not matter because this is, this is not a hard question, this is a medium question. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, 57% of people who got, who took this exam got this question right. Almost, almost 60%, 57%, almost three-fifths of the people got this right. But then again, if 57% of the people got it right, which is another way of saying that 43% of the people blew it. You have to be attentive. One has to pay attention. If you wish to work with me on a personal private tutor, uh, on, a, on a personal level for a personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or if you wish to buy the solution manuals to these questions, in either case, go to my website at www.preppreprep.com -E -E and send me an email. All right? Thanks.